I'd hate them to say that Prince John is less generous than King Richard. Sire, I should warn you. There are those who will say that such generosity ill befits one who is having such difficulty raising a ransom for his brother. Hi, welcome to WFP Reviews. This channel explores classic British movies and series and why they're still great to watch today. This time, a quick review. We look at the 1997 miniseries Ivanhoe. We'll focus on its great character portrayals and why it's a version you should track down. Now, Sir Walter Scott's classic has been filmed many times. The best known version is the big Hollywood treatment with Robert Taylor, Elizabeth Taylor, and George Sanders way back in 1952. That was a lot of star power, but many fans find our version more satisfying and much closer to Scott's novel. Our version was a co-production of the BBC and the A&E Network, and it was directed by Stuart Orme. I found it offered a rare breed of production. It's a costume epic, but with fleshed out characters that really come to life. The writing and performances are all good, but the longer running time of a miniseries really helps too. Filmed on dramatic locations in Northumbria, it's a project that's both smart and convincingly medieval. The series lacks the technicolor sheen of the Robert Taylor movie, sure, but its mud and castle settings offer a more realistic feel for 12th century England. But to me, its strongest asset is that it offers a very compelling villain. Now, there's nothing new about villains holding center stage in a production, but Sir and Hines turn here as a dark and conflicted knight really grabs you. Hines' character of Brian Bois de Gilbert is a complicated man whose struggles are interesting to watch. He was once a young idealistic warrior, but after years in the Crusades, he's a changed man, now jaded and cynical. And while he plots and murders, a spark of decency remains, and he can still be moved to caring. Heinz has gone on to play commanding men in productions like Rome, Game of Thrones, and The Terror. But this earlier role in Ivanhoe really caught my attention. His strong presence underpins the very complex story of knights, castles, romance, and redemption, all during the time of Richard the Lionheart. Scott's historic themes are there too, the tensions between Saxons and Normans, and early anti-Semitism. With these many pieces, director Orm still keeps the story moving forward amid chain mail carnage, scheming monarchs, and those great characters. Nothing can beat C. Anne Phillips, the cruel Livia from I, Claudius, as Queen Eleanor of Aquitaine. Here, she's a royal mother again, chiding her two grown sons, King Richard and Prince John. As we see, even squabbling princes can't talk back to mother. We also get Christopher Lee as head of the hard-praying, hard-fighting Templar Knights. Sadly, Lee only gets a few scenes, but his rich voice and intense, piercing gaze always demand attention. He's quite a presence, and it's a shame he wasn't in more high-quality productions earlier in his career. Susan Lynch is compelling as Rebecca, the Jewish woman who enters the hearts of both Ivanhoe and Gilbert. We also get iconic figures like Robin Hood and Friar Tuck, but this time looking like real men for a change. Is there anything more I can do to prove my manhood and my love? I'll do it! In the title role, Steve Waddington is stoic and strong, but in much of the story he's a wounded hero in hiding. He doesn't even get to center stage till the final chapter, and by then it's Gilbert who seems far more interesting. By the way, there have been over a dozen versions of Ivanhoe, but this one commands the highest rating on IMDb. In the past, we've also had silent Ivanhoes, cartoon and Hollywood Ivanhoes, and this rather cheesy 1958 series starring a future James Bond. Our reviewed series runs about four and a half hours, with plenty of time for battles and that great character depth. Streaming options for this version can be challenging to find, unfortunately, but this Ivanhoe is carried by many libraries on DVD, or you can buy it on Amazon or eBay. It's worth a look.
As always, thanks for watching. Please comment and subscribe and come back again soon to Waltz Flicks Picks. Thank you.